anticipated speed limit, which I'm passing through now, reducing the speed early so that I come in there at 30 miles an hour. Ahead I can see a bend round to the left, so I'll just come slightly off the line, leaving a few feet just in case there are vehicles coming towards me, which I can't see at this time. Again, looking ahead, I can see the road bearing round to the right, so I'm moving into the near side. Look at the road surface here, and you can see that I'm riding on this section of road that gives me the best grip, rather than the line that gives me necessarily the best view. And obviously, if I'm not on the line for the best view, I've got to reduce my speed. The position here for this right-hand bend gives me a good safety margin and a good view, in case there's any vehicles coming towards me. See the red vehicle just balancing the danger as I pass between it and the junction and now I've got stationary vehicles on the offside just again giving them a little room just in case they should deviate slightly. Still travelling at 40 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour speed limit and looking ahead I can see a dark vehicle. No point in me rushing up towards the back of it, he's doing 40 miles an hour as well. So by sitting back I don't put him under any pressure and also keep myself with a nice safety margin all the way round. I'm in a position where I could move up if I needed to should he slow down and consider an overtake but at the moment this is the best position for me to be in. By being towards the crown of the road I can see past the vehicle ahead and see anything that might cause him to alter course or speed. A motorcycle is at its most stable when it's upright with the engine pulling but with no increase in speed and that's the perfect platform for me to launch an overtake so I'm looking well up the road looking for opportunities when the national speed limits arrive where I could overtake. So I've set myself up, I've got the distance, I've got the right speed and I've engaged the right gear. Now that I'm at the national speed limits I can consider an overtake. So from this position the distance, the speed and the gear are done. I've just got the view ahead, mirror check, move out wide and apply hard acceleration. The correct gear for that, accelerate, for that overtake would be the one that gives me maximum acceleration. By positioning to the crown of the road I've got an early view of that blue car pulling out. So you can see the benefits of positioning for left hand and right hand bends. Here's a right hand bend and I should consider the road surface at the near side, plus any other dangers that there may, may be. If there are dangers on the near side, then obviously I'd come away from the line. The golden rule being that you should always adopt the line that gives you the maximum safety rather than the best view. And if you lose the view because of the line, then you have to reduce your speed. Road sweeping round to the right-hand bend. Have a look at the way I'm holding the vehicle into the near side because the bend is continuing round to the right. There's no benefit in keep moving in and out unless you're obtaining a good view. Another vehicle up ahead, I'm in an extended following position at the moment and now starting to move into an overtaking position. Again, I should never be closer on the motorbike than I would have been had I been in a car. I've got massive acceleration advantages over most cars with the motorbike, so there's no point in me being too close. The closer I am to the vehicle in front, the less I'm going to see. Again, I've got the distance, I've got the speed, I've got the gear, I've got a good view past that vehicle, mirror check, move out wide and apply good acceleration. I'm now going to hold the line towards the crown of the road as this sets me up perfectly for the left hand bend. So by overlapping the planning, I've kept a smooth line through the overtake and through the left hand bend. Looking well up ahead, I can see the tree line, the telegraph poles and the limit point all helping me assess the speed for the bend. Remembering, I must be able to stop within the distance I can see to be clear on my side of the road. I've got a junction on the left, so I'm going to move away from the junction. Again, safety is paramount. And if it means coming away from the line that gives you the maximum view, then you may need to reduce your speed accordingly. The road's fairly straight here, I can see it now bending round to the left, then the right and then back to the left and taking a smooth line through there without inconveniencing any other road users. Holding the vehicle out to the crown of the road and applying gentle acceleration as I negotiate that left hand bend. Moving into the near side now for the right hand bend that I can see coming up ahead. Holding the vehicle in, advance warning of a bend round to the right so tucking the vehicle in, slow on the road, again look at the road surface and my line, because of the junction on the near side, is adapted for safety's sake rather than the, the line that's going to give me the best possible view. The line that gives me the view isn't always the one that follows the road around its curve and you will quite often find that I'm coming off the line slightly early because I can already see where the next bend is. There's no point just following the curb line round on the right hand bend if you already can see the road and it lines up with the next bend. Again, gentle acceleration all the way around these bends. I can see the road bearing away to the right, so holding the vehicle into the near side. And now really extending my view. And now I'm going to look at moving across to the offside to extend my view around a long left hand bend. This is an advanced technique, it means I must know there's no traffic coming towards me. I must consider dangers on the offside. I must be very sure that no other motorist or road user is going to be inconvenienced by me using the offside of the road there. 
holding into the near side and I'm now looking as far ahead as I possibly can. I can see well up ahead a lorry travelling in my direction and some sort of white vehicle coming down the hill towards me. So even at this early stage I'm starting to plan how I'm going to come in to the, towards the back of the lorry with a view to overtaking it. Remembering those three things that I'm looking for, the distance, the speed and the gear. I'm coming into the crown of the road because that's giving me the best view. I can see one oncoming vehicle so I'm adjusting my speed accordingly. I've got the distance right, I've matched my speed, I've got the correct gear for overtaking, mirror check, move out wide and then hard acceleration to pass the lorry as quickly as possible and continue on my way. Again you should see there that this is all one flowing movement, no unnecessary application of the brakes or moving the vehicle from one side to the other. All I need are those three things plus the view and every overtake should be done easily with good technique rather than just by taking a chance.